Thank you, Federico. We have uh, a limited time to end up uh, this session, uh, but uh, Walter Kowalski will have to leave uh, before. Uh, so I will change the agenda uh, to leave the floor to the speakers that have already uh, had their presentation. I will ask to Kowalski that if he wants to uh, speak now. Yes. Thanks a lot for inviting me to this important meeting. Um, Wolfgang Kowalski, I'm working at ETUC on the information consultation and participation uh, issue. Um, so I will have a look. I was asked to have a look on the question of supply chains on these instruments we have. Uh, this comes at the right moment because um, the ETUC just decided last month to launch, to launch a campaign in favor of better rights for workers on information consultation and participation. Because we are confronted to a very strange situation at European level. Since more than a decade, we didn't make any progress at all. The Commission published a social pillar, but there was nothing on information consultation and participation. The Commission will publish tomorrow a new package on company law, on company mobility, and the objective of the Commission is to facilitate company mobility. They will have uh, three new instruments, new and old instruments, facilitate transfer of seat, which is easy and uh, which is quite linked to the issue of supply chain. Uh, second, they want to revise the mergers directive. And third, they want to add a new instrument for facilitating divisions of company. And this is quite dangerous because we have a few instruments. We have no, as Guglielmo said beforehand, we have no clear instrument for uh, controlling supply change, but we have a, some instrument from different sides. And if we put it together like a spider net, we can have some influence on this. Amongst those instruments are the information consultation uh, tools. There are, I would say, I simplify a little bit four of them. The first is the framework directive on information consultation at national level. So in different member states, either you have works councils or you have other bodies to inform and consult workers. The rights are somewhat different from one country to the other, but at least there is a, this has to be established in all countries since 2002. But what is missing, and the ETUC a few years ago asked for a revision of the directive, and we wanted to have a better directive. And we said, Information consultation must cover the value chain, upstream suppliers, subcontractors, dependent companies downstream. So we recognized there is a loophole and we said to the Commission something must be done. Unfortunately, the Commission didn't answer. They did a fitness check and they simply said, okay, all the directives are fit for purpose. We said no. They are old directives, it must be updated, they must also be fit to see what's happening in the value chain. Because it, it doesn't help if the, some inside the company trade unions are strong, we can make sure there are good working conditions, everything is uh, respected, There's, it's a sustainable company respecting the standards, and then they outsource a part somewhere else in the world and we have no control. Nevertheless, as he said before, we have to use these instruments. In the meetings of the works councils or the worker representation body, we can ask for this information. We don't always get an answer, but in some companies we get answers and we can exert pressure so that the rules are applied along the whole value chain. 
Um, second, we have in big companies European works councils and companies up from 1,000. We have European works councils. We have more or less the same rights, information consultation. We have the same situation, no right to control the value chain. But uh, a year ago, the ETUC asked for a revision of the EWC directive as well. Unfortunately, the Commission, same picture, no answer. The Commission told us they have to analyze how it works. And since uh, 2016, that's written down in the directive, they should come up with an assessment. They said first in 2000, end of 2016, then they made the play beginning 2017, end of 2000. Now they told us this month it will be published, but after so man, many promises not kept, we are skeptical, but uh, one day they will mm. publish it. <laughs> and, uh, but we know already there are a lot of loopholes in the directive to uh, say only one. 40% of the EWC that works, EWCs don't correspond to the directive. They were created before the directive come into place and they can continue. And our colleagues in these EWC have the problem. They can say, we stop this agreement, but in the directive it isn't said that during the renegotiation time, and that can take one year, that can take two years, it depends from the company when they agree, there will be no works councils at all. So a lot of our colleagues say, okay, better work with a bad EWC than with no EWC at all. We told the commission that the commission said, okay, we will check and okay, we will see what will be the outcome. The third instrument we have in 18 member states out of 28 is representation of workers in company boardrooms. Um, for us, this is a very important tool because in the boardrooms you get the same information, the complete information as the shareholders. In most of the countries you have a third of the workers in the boardrooms, so we never, and uh, in some systems we have half of them, but we never have the majority. So in the end, it's always the management and the owners who can decide. But we have the situation that we can ask all the questions, also about the supply chain. And in this room, they have to answer. But then comes the confidentiality. Um, we have to pay attention because uh, they will declare this is confidential because it is on our business model. It is, and everything which is related to the commercial situation can be declared confidential. And for them, if they can find a company, a subcontractor, which is cheaper, and this is part of the business model, they can oblige our people not to say too much. Okay, we try nevertheless to inform at least the trade union colleagues in general and the EWC members, but this makes our life somewhat difficult. So we ask that there should be strict rules what can be declared confidential, because it's too easy for the, the company can give us all the information and then they simply uh, say it's confidential. That can't be accepted. First, we want to know until when it's confidential, because if a company comes up with a new product, they know when it will come up and they can declare until then it's confidential. But on working conditions in the supply chain, I don't know why this should be confidential. So that's also a part of the spider web we have to spin to get this information. Um, we have, as you see now, very clear demands, but the problem is Commission doesn't listen. And in the Parliament, when we make publicity for our demands, we have more than 750 members of Parliament, but there are very few understanding trade union language and taking the initiative to help us. So we are now at a good moment. That's why we started this campaign. We have to make clearer what is our aim 
Why do we need more information consultation and participation for workers? What does it mean in a clear language, avoiding slogans, uh, jargon, avoiding abbreviations? I was asked in a public meeting, uh, what is EWC? Is it an e-water closet? So I understood, okay, even that is too much jargon. People, there are people who don't understand this. So we have to explain every time what it is about to create a better condition that the next commission can't escape because we have enough support in the European Parliament. And this is linked also to next year in May, on one side, EDUC has Congress, but there will be also e EP elections. And it's important to make campaign that we have enough colleagues in the Italians most pay attention, but there are a lot of others who don't pay enough attention. When we ask them, can you give us a few names? We don't get much, but this is important. It's not necessary that we get the majority in the parliament, no. In the past, it succeeded to have a group of 50, 60 people, which is a critical mass to help us to push the parliament in the right direction. So we are ambitious, but not as it's not impossible. We don't ask for the impossible. And uh, so this is quite important so that we can really improve the situation. And I would like to finish and say a few words also on standards. It's quite important. Uh, uh, Guido had mentioned it. There's one standard, TCO, which is a standard developed by trade unions. So most of the computers have TCO standards and only few people know what it means. So Guido will in future organize a meeting to invite the director from our Swedish colleagues who deal with this. And we want this multiplied much more in Europe. We need more standards. Somebody mentioned standards for hotels. We can imagine a lot. We are all traveling a lot and we would respect such a standard and perhaps we could create the critical mass to change also for the better. And um, a short comment, you mentioned the non-financial reporting. There is now, just now, ongoing a commission consultation on public reporting by companies. And I would encourage you, we sent out an email uh, to invite you to participate in the consultation. And you should stress there is a loophole on supply chain and there must be more done. And I think when many trade unions and perhaps also colleagues from the standardization body answer to this and say all the same, this is a new loophole which is used and we want to close it, then the Commission might be more open to change this as well. And we have some time. The consultation goes on until 21st of July. So it's not tomorrow or the day after where you have to do that. And uh, for our Democracy of Work campaign, we, we are just launching an European appeal, which should be published on Europe Day, which is 9th of May. And for this, we, we look for signatures from secretary generals, trade unions, uh, we sent it out not even a week ago. We already have 15, but we have 89 member organizations and all the sub-organizations, so we should uh, get much more, and we would be extremely uh, thankful if you could help as well. Uh, and the last point on uh, digitalization, you had it in this morning, but I think... Uh, Sometimes uh, we have a quite skeptical view on it, but there are some things happening which go in the right direction. For the first time, we have in some online platforms established works councils in Cologne, in Vienna. And thanks to my colleague sitting here, your uh, Stefania reported back this morning, for the very first time, we succeeded to get half parity in the supervisory board in one of these platforms. And there, that's the place where all the company decisions are made. So we can tell them, 
even if they don't listen because we don't have the majority, but we can push them in the, directive, in the direction to make fair wages, to respect minimum standards, to have good working conditions. And I think this is a major breakthrough. We shouldn't underestimate it. And this is linked to a few other events in recent times, which perhaps put some of the big players more on the defensive. You all followed the scandal of Facebook, 87 million data of persons stolen. Until now, I haven't seen that they change the business model. The business model continues to be the same. Collect all data available, even if you're not on Facebook, your data can be collected by these as well as by Google. But at least they are now on the defensive. I've seen in big newspapers they made publicity for the European Data Protection Regulation. What an irony. They fought against it. And now they ask us all who are on Facebook to accept the new rules of procedure. Perhaps we should wait a little bit before we accept it. Perhaps there, there will be a better offer later. We will see. And last not, but not least, the most disruptive company, Uber, which has had the objective to get rid of comp competitors, not respect labor law, not respect employment conditions. Now they are also on the defensive. They promised to have less accidents. And now a self-driving car by Uyuba killed a person. So what's the promise and what is the reality? And a lot of US member states now said, stop the public testing. This is too dangerous. That's what, what they should have done from the beginning. But now they take a step back. It's more like in Europe. We are more cautious. We do it on test uh, terrains, but not in public. First, we have to make sure that these cars are not uh, add to the much too high figure of uh, accidents. OK, so I think it's quite important, the work you are doing. And we should consider it as a spider net where we get more and more grip on what is happening in the companies and to close all these loopholes. And we have some instruments which must be improved, but we have to use them all, even if they are different from one country to the other. Okay, if there are any questions, I still have a quarter of an hour and I can listen to you. Thanks for your attention. Thanks to Wolfgang because he uh, made an overview of the situation and he has uh, a clear idea of that because he managed all these things. Uh, there are some uh, clarifications uh, that might uh, need an answer. Um, I asked to uh, Anna what she organized an event in a region and an initiative uh, for for uh, European issues and uh, concerning the uh, coming elections in the European um, Parliament, uh, how can we organise ourselves for uh, uh, the uh, for the lobby? and for their structure. And I would like to thank uh, Mr. Kowalski because uh, he um, instantly believed in our initiative and we were so stubborn to want to go on with this. And we think that the Fudora can uh, be what can help us to go inside this dimension. And they helped us and it was relaunched and we hope that we will go on with this. I uh, will need some answers to for Mr. Bertazzi, we will end up with uh, the uh, panel and uh, I'll give the floor to Kirsty. Um, and to Kirsty, I will say this, as a trade unionist for uh, the trade sector, when uh, we had uh, the new guidelines for international companies and the supply chains was identified not only for, uh, for supply but also for distribution, uh, because I often deal with, with with franchising, I was very interested to the new guidelines and the possibility to implement them in our sectors. Kirsty, I'll give you the floor. <laughs> 